Hello everyone, welcome to Uncork Life by WineChateau.com. I'm Brian Friedman, and today we'll be tasting Riesling Cabinets from the excellent 2008 Vintage. Now, uh, let's just address this right off the bat. The names of German Rieslings do tend to intimidate a lot of people. Let's face it, it's easier to order a Merlot or a Cabernet in a restaurant than it is to order an Orziger Wurzgarten Riesling Spätlese. Difficult, I know. Uh, but get over the fear, get over the nerves, because the rewards when it comes to the juice in the bottle are tremendous. Plus, the advantage is once you actually learn exactly how the labels are laid out and what the different terms mean, you discover that these labels tell you everything you need to know about that wine, from ripeness level to specific vineyard to producer to vintage, everything is there. Little memorization, huge rewards follow from there. So, I have a cheat sheet here. I'm not going to uh, frankly, be able to remember the names of these wines uh, off the top of my head, I'm not ashamed of it, all right? We're getting over our fears already. So, wine number one, we have the Reichsgruff von Kesselstadt 2008 Riesling Cabinet Peas Porter Gold Tropschen. And wine number two, we have the von Schubert Riesling Cabinet Maximin Grunhauser Herrenberg. Uh, again, both cabinets, both from the excellent 2008 vintage. Every vintage report is talking about how it's not a year for opulence or for over-the-top drama, but for classic expression of the terroir. For my money, that's what the Mosel's all about. No further ado, wine number one, the Reichsgraf von Kesselstadt. Look at this off the nose. And there's a wonderful sense of ripe summer peaches, uh, just really juicy peaches, um, honey, there's flowers there, there's orange blossoms, there's hints of acacia, but at the same time we do get that sense of minerality coming right down the middle there. And that's what I love about great Mosul Riesling, is that juxtaposition between the beautiful ripe fruit and that earth, that, uh, that slate, that minerality that's so typical of the best versions of these wines. Let's give it a taste, see if that wonderful nose follows through on the palate. Wow. This is exactly what I love so much about Riesling. This wine is light on its feet, there's wonderful mouth-watering acidity, but at the same time there's a sense of presence on the palate. I'm not going to call it unctuousness. Uh, frankly, you're not going to find that at the cabinet level. But there's a sense of presence to it, of weight. You know that you're drinking something that's really quite serious here. Uh, great wine. Uh, minerality expresses itself even more. Uh, warm sort of slates coming through there, uh, but at the same time that peach is expanding to encompass um, sort of like wonderfully ripe tart apples. Great Granny Smith there covered in caramel, you know those caramel apples you get this time of year in the autumn? Not the candied apples with that red, you know, uh, glassy stuff on the outside, but the caramel apples. Um, beautiful here. The finish is honeyed. Um, uh, again, the flowers are, are coming through on the finish. This is just a beautiful, balanced, exquisite wine. I would love to drink this on its own. I think it'd be excellent with food, uh, but quite honestly, on its own, this is just gorgeous. Wine number two. We have the Von Schubert Riesling Cabinet Maximin Grunhauser Herrenberg. And yes, I was looking at my cheat sheet again. So, give this one a smell. Now this is interesting. This is a lot less giving right off the nose. I'm not getting that effusive sense of peachiness that I was on the first one. In fact, if anything, I'm getting almost like a smoked stone, if you can imagine this, like, like slate on a warm day after it's been warmed up by the sun. Uh, but really the fruit here is, is, is holding back a little bit. Not a bad thing, but a very different expression here. See, now for me, this one just needs more time. Um, it's almost entirely mineral driven. If anything, on the very end of it, a little bit of fruit starting to come out. You know those little tangellos? This is what I'm getting there. I'm getting much more in the citrus family as opposed to the stone fruit family here. Um, certainly a little bit of apple, like a, like a nice sour apple, but it's not that sweet fruit of the Kesselstadt. Again, it's just going to appeal to a different audience. 
uh, Riesling fans are very, very passionate about which style they like, about what kind of expression they like. Um, you know, something like this, something like the Schubert, I think needs food right now. Um, you know, it's, it's not for me the kind of wine that I'd want to drink on its own right now, although certainly I would predict uh, that in another 5, 10, or even 15 years it will evolve into something that you could drink on its own. But right now, uh, this one, the Von Schubert, would be the food wine, and uh, the first one, the Kesselstadt, would be just as lovely to drink on its own. Now, a little bit here about what they're doing um, at Von Schubert. Um, most of their uh, fertilizers are organic. Um, they have this really interesting cover cropping, wild herbs and grasses, and this is really important, and we're learning more and more about what kind of a major impact this has on wines as people are doing it uh, progressively more and more passionately. Um, you know, as you have more natural cover cropping, as you get rid of the chemical fertilizers and pesticides on the vineyards, you're bringing back the natural balance between the flora and the fauna, uh, the microscopic life of the soil, and it really allows these great vineyard sites to express themselves much more clearly without that, call it, uh, obscuring screen uh, of all those chemicals that uh, at one point were used a little bit more than they probably should have been. Uh, I'm definitely a firm believer in limiting the yields and in really allowing the sense of place to shine through, just like they're doing here uh, at Von Schubert. So, two excellent examples of Riesling Cabinet from the Mosul. Uh, just great wines, but totally different expressions. This is the beauty uh, of Riesling, a grape that's so transparent that allows the sense of place to come through, and it allows the uh, what do we want to say? It allows the vision of the winemaker, of the producer, to really shine through as well. Great stuff. 08 is, frankly, living up to all the hype. Beautiful, delicious wines. Great sense of minerality. Um, can't recommend them highly enough. Well, from all of us here at Uncork Life by WineChateau.com, I'm Brian Friedman. Until next time, don't be intimidated by those Riesling names. It is well worth your effort to learn these wines, to taste these wines, and fall in love with these wines. I guarantee you will. Till next time, cheers.